Hello students, today we are going to learn certain important definitions as far as enzyme kinetics is concerned. The very first definition is of enzyme activity. What is it? Activity that causes transformation of one micromole of substrate per minute under optimum conditions. So, the very first thing is you have to maintain optimum condition. Suppose this is a test tube and here we have added enzyme and substrate. How much substrate we have to take? We have to take one micromole of the substrate. One micromole means 10 to the power minus 6 moles of substrate. And if this enzyme which has been given optimum condition Suppose the optimum temperature of the enzyme is 25 degrees Celsius, then we will maintain 25. If the optimum temperature of the enzyme is 37 degrees Celsius, we will maintain 37. Optimum means the best. The temperature at which enzyme will show its full activity. Similarly, we have to see the optimum pH of the enzyme also. Suppose it is 7, then we will maintain 7. So what is 5? I will maintain 5. And if after maintaining all optimum conditions, one micromole substrate is converted by this enzyme into one micromole product in one minute, then this activity is referred as one unit enzyme activity. Okay? So one micromole substrate is converted into one micromole product in one minute. But when, when all the conditions are optimum, temperature, pH, everything, then that activity will be referred as enzyme activity. Okay? Let's move to another definition. Specific activity. This is actually a better a reflection of the enzyme activity. Especially when we isolate an enzyme from any new source. Okay? Example, consider that I have certain plant leaves, okay, and from these plant leaves, I will crush them, okay, and I will isolate enzyme from it by several purification process. Of course, enzyme, we are not going to get any particular enzyme in a single step. We will require many, several process to isolate it. For that we have to perform chromatography, sometimes electrophoresis, sometimes combination of both and then these all are the separation techniques by which we will isolate that enzyme. And now I think that this enzyme is pure. Means whatever I have isolated from this crushed leaves is exactly enzyme and I have removed everything else. But don't forget enzymes are proteins and if enzymes are proteins then definitely when I, am, I have isolated this enzyme it is well possible certain other proteins might also have come along with enzyme to small extent now don't forget enzyme itself is protein and other than this protein which is of my interest, nothing but my enzyme. Certain other proteins are also present as impurity. So, it is well possible 99% of this total protein is actually my enzyme. But 1% impurities might be present in the form of certain other proteins. Thus, out of that 100 percent solution of enzyme one percent impurities are well possible definitely when i will check the enzyme activity i will take some of it add it in another test tube and i will add substrate and the substrate is converted into product it is well possible that 99 percent of it might be having enzyme but one percent might be having other proteins as impurities so the activity suppose it has converted the substrate into product and i will measure the activity this activity is actually not because 
100% enzyme. It is actually because of 99% enzyme. And 1% are present certain other impurities other than enzyme. So, what we will do now? I will measure the enzyme activity. This will be enzyme activity, no doubt. Okay, we are well familiar how to measure it. It can be measured spectrophotometrically. And I have measured enzyme activity. Suppose here this enzyme is showing 10 units enzyme activity. 10 unit is the enzyme activity. Now what I will do, I will take some of it in another test tube and I will go for protein estimation. Now when we talk about protein estimation, it can be done by Pauline Lowry's method. It can be done by Bradford method. There are several other methods by which protein estimation can be performed. I have performed protein estimation in this. And after performing protein estimation, total protein estimation, I will get how much amount of protein is present in 1 ml of this solution. Okay. So consider 1 mg protein is present in 1 ml of its solution. Then the total protein of it will be 1 mg per ml. And here also I have taken 1 ml enzyme which has converted 10 micromoles of sodium to 10 micromoles product and that's why I am saying that my activity is 10 units. But now I will divide it with total protein. How much is the total protein? It is 1 mg. So 10 units per mg of protein. What I have done, I have divided the enzyme activity with the amount of protein which is also present in the this isolated uh, uh, solution. Okay, right from the beginning. We have isolated an enzyme from a source. It might be plant use, it might be any particular animal organ, whatever enzyme it is. In the same solution, I will go for protein estimation and I will find out how much protein is present in 1 ml of the solution. So now this amount of protein, I will divide the enzyme activity with, with the amount of protein. So up till now, what we were having enzyme activity is equal to 10 units per minute or 10 units. Now it is 10 units per minute per mg of protein. This is called specific activity. Look at it. Enzyme activity in units per mg of protein. Here enzyme activity is only in units. Now it is per mg of protein. And it is the measure of enzyme purity. Because suppose this solution which we have isolated is containing 100% enzyme. Means there is no impurity. Then definitely its activity would have been more per mg of protein. Okay, this is how, what do we calculate? Specific activity. Then, this is given as activity per mg of protein, that is units per mg of protein, which we have just seen. Let's move to another definition. Turnover number of enzyme, which is also called molar activity of enzyme, which is also called molecular activity of enzyme. And when we talk about turnover number of enzyme, it is number of substrate molecules converted to product per catalytic site per minute. Now why it is written per catalytic site per minute. Okay, per minute is common there in this definition also. But why per catalytic site? Because in aspartate transcarbamylase enzyme there are six active sites, catalytic sites. There are many enzymes which have more than one active site or catalytic site. In that case, such enzymes will perform at a faster rate. But that won't be the exact reflection of enzyme activity. How much substrate is converted into product per catalytic site? So, if any enzyme has 5 catalytic site, then it will work fast. What do you need is per catalytic site and that is called turnover number also called molar activity or molecular activity and it is given as activity per mole of protein. So 8 mole proteins make it the activity. This is the latest unit of enzyme activity and that is called cutal. Also called international unit. 
amount of enzyme activity that transforms one mole substrate per second means here it was one micromole they are saying one mole here it was one minute okay per minute but here it is per second maximum enzymes don't show such fast activity because one mole substrate is a big amount and if any enzyme is converting one mole substrate into one mole product and that is also in one second okay that is called one catal activity that is one cat okay now just now we have discussed very few enzymes are, are they might be there which will convert one mole substrate into one mole product which is a big enough in, in even in one second okay and that's why mini catal micro catal nano catal or pico catal such terms also come so suppose i have one micromole substrate and that is converted into one micromole product in one second then that will be referred as micro cat micro catal if it is converting one nano sub mole substrate into one nano uh, uh, mole product in one second that will be nano cat like this so such activities are there and applicable uh, are applicable to normal enzymes okay because no enzymes were going to work with this much spirit okay specific activity can be given as catal per kg of protein or micro catal per mg of protein so if i will i will think about specific activity in which i am going to divide the enzyme uh, activity with mg of protein because in the same solution we are going to perform the protein estimation so i can give it in catal per kg of protein or micro catal per mg of protein by dividing this activity whatever activity i will get with that much amount of protein catal per mole of enzyme can also be used to represent what per mole of enzyme means actually the turnover number of enzyme okay this is how these are very important definition as far as enzyme kinetics is concerned thank you